every trans girl has a unique story. One of my first vivid memories of like associating with a female was seeing Madonna and just being like, that's me. I guess I kind of made the decision to transition starting like two or three years ago, but it was something that really took a lot of building up to, to put into motion. There's so many moments in life where you feel guilt and you feel shame and all that, but you get to the point where you realize things aren't gonna change. So I just thought that the best thing to do as a parent, also as an artist, is just trying to embrace the truth that you feel inside of yourself. After you come out and after you start talking about it, you kind of feel stupid for how long you haven't dealt with the issue because people have been so overwhelmingly supportive. The amount of trans girls or trans guys that come out to our shows now and always stick around to like say hi afterwards, it's encouraging. I'm overwhelmed by the amount of support my wife gave me. It's awesome. Hi! Hi. <laughs> nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. So this is my closet, oh. my shared closet with my wife. So this is this is more my section of it, and this is my wife's section of it. But at the same time, she'll oftentimes encroach on my side, and I sometimes will go in her side and swipe stuff. I'm probably one of the luckiest transsexuals in the world. Don't tell me you have a small foot. I have the same size shoe as my wife, so I can steal any of her shoes. Watching Laura's style transform during this transition has been really awesome. Being able to express yourself through what you're wearing is liberating and, and really a part of being like a creative person. It's like being a, like a teenager. If she wants to dance and drink all night, well, there's no one that can stop her. I was always into music. I started playing guitar when I was eight years old, and I knew from like a really young age that I wanted to play in bands. So that was kind of always my focus. How has your style evolved from then to now? Well, I got into punk rock and you know, my fashion when I was younger was very much like you wear the same pair of jeans every single day and you want them to look dirty. It was very much about like charging out your hair and piercings a and stuff like that. A lot of hairspray, the gel. Right, which was hell in Florida because it's A, humid, and then B, it rains every day mm -hmm. at 2 so it drops down. Right, so school gets out and you're coming out of school with like a mohawk <laughs> or liberty spikes and you're just like, oh my god, it's raining. Let's start with the, the beginning. I've had this vest since I was probably 19 years old. And if you can see like the texture of it, mm -hmm. that's real dirt. And you know that now they actually make jeans to look like this. I know, the it's shiny. messed up. And then they charge you more, more for it. But then this shirt I've had since I was probably 13 years old. This is my old dead Kennedy shirt. Wow. It's held up. But so when I was a young punk kid and I was dumpster diving and wearing uh -huh. this and this, I think it's important to know that I was still going home at night and washing my face with Clinique. So <laughs> there's no reason why you can't be punk and have good skin. When you're younger and you're trans, it's not like you have a lot of options or anything like that. Because usually you're so nervous and you go into a store and it's about what's the first thing you see when no one's looking that you can grab and put in your cart or put oh. in your bag and, and get away with. I mean, I'll be honest, I used to steal people's clothes. <laughs> this dress here, it's just, you know, a Massimo dress from Target. But this is the dress I wore the first time I went out in public dressed female to meet my psychotherapist. But so Massimo in particular, you know, is it's at Target and it's one of those, as I was talking about, like right there on the rack when and you first the walk first in, one, quick you swipe, it. you know? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> but I like this stuff too, so. Like a lot of the things I used to wear when I was, you know, dressing identified as male, I still wear the same brands, just in the female versions. Like mm -hmm. I really like, like to me, Fred Perry stuff will always be classic. And this is like one of their new things. It's the Amy Winehouse collection. Oh yeah. Um, but I love Fred Perry stuff. This is probably my my favorite dress that I have right now. This is a Subi dress. Oh, wow. Um, a little risque, huh? You pay more for the holes, right? But I really, like, Subi's an Australian designer and I really like their stuff. This would be like something I would be comfortable wearing on stage, you know? Performing now on stage, mm -hmm. how has your wardrobe changed? Bottom line for stage stuff, it still has to be really comfortable and it has to be really functional. Because I'm swinging around a guitar and also our stage shows can be pretty chaotic. Lots of people getting up, so you need to, to be wearing something you, you're not too concerned about getting trashed, you know? So it's just usually tank tops, you know, and, and jeans and, and whatever shoes, you know. Did you start wearing heels on stage? Yeah, but heels are great for performing because it immediately like corrects your posture for singing. So you you have the power stance down really easy.
easy thing with heels. The shoes I've been wearing most, like while playing live lately, has been these Steve Maddens, and they got a little heel on the back there. But these are great because they're really sturdy, and then you know they give you the lift and they give you the posture for singing. These are my birthday present boots. Wow, Margella. I love these boots. Amazing. But I wore these on stage at Fun 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 Fest, which mm -hmm. we just played. But these would be an example of a pair of shoes that aren't necessarily comfortable to wow. play in, but look fantastic. They look comfortable, you know? Yeah, a little scrunchy on the toe, and they definitely like rub the pinkies mm -hmm. raw. I think my feet were bleeding after I got off stage with these, but I looked fantastic, yeah. so that's all that mattered. <laughs> if the shoe's too small, you put either uh, baby powder on oh, okay. the shoe, and it slips right in, or you put lotion on the back of your heel. That's smart. Do you have a goal on where your style evolution will lead? For a lot of transsexuals, it's really important to pass in public. And while I understand that I don't mind being identified as a transsexual when I go out in public, I'm very happy with myself and I'm very comfortable with myself. And it's really just about feeling comfortable with what you wear when you go out. You know, talking about goals and stuff like that, sometimes I'll buy like an item of clothing, like I'll get this piece of clothing as a goal, like to eventually look good in it or feel comfortable and fit in it. But these are my current goal. I want to feel comfortable wearing those oh. on stage. So. And beauty regimen. Uh -huh. Where did you learn it from? I mean, I've been doing my own makeup since I was like 10 years old, you know, just getting into my mother's makeup. When it comes to skincare, like I use the Clinique Snuff Clarifying Lotion Number 2 and the moisturizer. Um, and then I use like uh, every day, like for a sunscreen. I love the Stella McCartney. Ooh. That's my favorite fragrance right now, but sometimes I'll just spray like a rose water or something like mm -hmm. that, you know? But yeah, that's my favorite. This is an epilator. <laughs> so, oh. And, oh, that's the one that like pulls the yeah, hair? Yeah, it pulls the hair out. I've been tattooed all over my body and nothing is more painful than this. <laughs> A lot of the, the you know things I do, or a lot of the tips I've picked up, have really been from other trans women on the internet. Like in particular, other women that I've met since coming out, and they all have like unique beauty tips and all unique things they recommend, you know. And you know, the only reason that I'm putting I, myself out here and talking about anything is because there's been so many trans girls on YouTube or that I've read about that you know put themselves out there and made their knowledge available. That I, I feel like I have to return the favor, you know. And when I was 14 years old, if I was watching House of Style. Like someone, <laughs> some, uh, watching a transsexual being interviewed and talking about that, then it would have completely changed my life and it would have been completely like, you know, would have felt saved. Mm -hmm.